Chapter 87 Rack and Roll Shadows of Centris. In retrospect, telling Amadi that the stripper purple unicorn was a stripper purple unicorn conspiracy leader was a bad idea, mostly because the man's focus was now so frayed that the illusion that he was still standing there had gone from kind of flat to a full on cardboard cutout, complete with a thick black marker outline. Reggie's response was to distract himself by rooting around for more communication drops and finding no less than five in so many minutes as Koa offered the goth-slash-bimbo-slash-cultist-slash-unicorn the mildest amount of attention so that she wouldn't notice just how badly her own schemes had fallen apart. Meanwhile, he was actually recording this to send to the intelligence division who sent a short reply to calm his tits and remember that just because she looks like an idiot doesn't mean there's not a grenade up that fluffy purple cleavage that they're getting so much under boob from. He passes this information to the other two men. Then there's a text from Harriet stating that armed women are starting to gather in the area. This is followed by Lavender getting one herself. Her behavior changes at once and she pokes her head to look over the washing machines. Her eyes widen and all three of them get taken down to the floor at the knees with a burst of kinetic force and held in place. Amadi straight up vanishes as his illusion fades and he slams a pistol into the side of her head to expose himself with his face contorted in fury. No funny business. What are you planning? He demands the unicorn. What am I planning? What are you planning? Are your dreadmasters coming to collect you? She demands. Oh fuck, there's a third party. Reggie curses even as Harriet screams for people to take cover and something crashes through the window. Down! Koa orders the cult leader and throws himself over her. A pulse rips through the air and the axiom scrambles. Every machine dies and stops leaving the three men unhurt, but Lavender and Harriet are dropped. One borderline unconscious, the other merely off balance. That was null! That... what? This... I don't... Lavender mutters even as all three men wrestle with the large weapon suddenly in two small pockets. Dude, two Uzis! What the hell are you doing with two Uzis? Amadi demands as he wrestles out his grenade launcher and rips the pocket open just do be done with things. Thank God these didn't go off. He mutters quickly, checking his now exposed collection of grenades. Guys, there's like 15 people dropped outside. You need to watch your fire with whoever these crazies are, especially you Amadi. Reggie remarks, glancing up at the reflection of a few open glass doors for the dryers as he puts together his rifle. His pants and jacket are bulging with the pieces of the large gun. I'm not a retard, Reggie. Amadi answers as he glances up and over the laundry machine and ducks down under a laser blast. There's about 30 of them. The fuck is even going on? Why did we go from laundry to a shootout? Koa demands as he pokes his head around the side and takes a good look. Why are they coming at us in fucking power armor? What? Lavender asks as she starts to regain her senses more and more. But just lifting her eyelids feels immensely difficult. The affect of the Null seems to be dissipating and she's shocked to find the three normal-looking Tret men have turned into ridiculously armed warriors. Null's starting to clear. Need another minute before I can offer more than fire support. Amadi says, peering between the machines. They're mostly packing lasers with a smattering of plasma. I'm seeing something. I don't recognize three of the weapons. Here, let me, Lavender says, forcing herself upright on shaking legs. The null isn't affecting them. Her mind is spinning at the implications as she slumps up against a chunk of metal that was a fully functional washer just a minute or two before. She looks through the gap and groans. One's a... It's a ball lightning blaster. We're not safe here. Another, that's a wubber. It unfolds into an instrument that gives out concussive waves of sound. Last one, that's... Oh no. It's an endless barrage. 
It uses shrinking tech to have thousands upon thousands of rockets that fire off in the hundreds per second. Fuck, Koa hisses. We need to leave. Is there a back way out? Reggie demands, even as he glances between the machines in no small amount of awe. Also, I want those weapons. They are way too cool to leave in the hands of Cretans. Well, duh, but let's get to a position that doesn't have us as sitting ducks. Ahmadi responds. Give me a moment. The axiom is almost settled. He says before there's a slight ripple of blue light around him, and there's a strange sensation that makes Lavender perk up even as her strength returns. Tirita! She's out there and in the line of fire, Lavender half screams. Shit, she's right. We need to evacuate civilians first and then open up on these idiots. Koa remarks and there are nods. Where the hell are the police? Reggie demands as he looks through the illusion that's transparent on their side, even as Amadi both keeps it running and is checking the back of the shop for a way out. He boots a locked door open and glances through it. Come on! He barks, and Reggie and Koa help Lavender out of the room and they exit through a side door. More illusions and they slip out to the side and quickly begin to evacuate as many people as possible as Amadi keeps everything distracted and invisible. Fake targets of the three of them trying to peek their heads out in the laundromat gives a display of all the standard weapons present. Then the ball lightning cannon is launched in and everything in there is badly electrocuted. Amadi goes into a borderline trance as he puts on a realistic show of all four of them twitching into uselessness like everyone's been tased. Four of the armored attackers advance in, and Amadi adjusts the sight on his launcher and nods to Koa and Reggie even as the two men prepare to attack. Boss lady, what happened? Harriet asks, still deep undercover. You two any good in a fight? Koa asks as Lavender seems to have a slight panic attack. Her eyes are closed, so he offers Harriet a wink she returns. I can try. Thanks for the pistol. Point and click? Harriet asks, pulling out her own hidden pistol out of sight of the freaking out Lavender. With lots of blowback, be careful with it. It's kinetic. You shoot, and something is getting hit no matter what. Co explains as Lavender gapes and looks between him and Harriet. You sure this is... Um, the unicorn asks. I don't think running is the best idea, boss lady, Harriet says. Then she leans in close. Besides, if they're not robots, then we need to see what kind of people these trets are. They are up to something, but it could go any way imaginable. We need information. She whispers to the cultist whose eyes light up in response. Break! Koa orders, and Amadi lets out a trinity of grenades into the backs of the mechs as they stand at the entrance of the laundromat. Koa lets out a blazing sweep of bullets into the armed and dangerous crazies, even as Reggie takes careful aim and shatters the viewport of one of the remaining mechs. Illusions of them running to the left appear, and all of them break right instead. A concussive blast of sound erupts from the unfolding wubber and slams into the illusions to no effect. Amadi swears at his lack of focus and begins to run back the other way. Keep the head games going. There are only shield, Koa orders. How about an actual shield, Reggie demands. There are too many kinds of attacks. One or two I can stop, but there are at least five, Amadi retorts. Go up, you idiots. We'll use the high ground and keep the illusions running at a lower level, Koa says, pumping Axiom into his body and launching upwards. Reggie follows and Amadi grabs Lavender by one limb as Harriet grabs the other and they follow. The large overhang above the laundromat is part of a hanging ad, and all the men position themselves along it to get preferable firing positions even as their illusions on the ground multiply to add a metric ton of confusion to the situation. Koa packs away one of his Uzis to increase his accuracy and takes aim at the still-standing terrorists. On my mark. Ready. Reggie answers as he takes careful aim at the next-to-last remaining mech. Set. Amadi answers as he reloads his grenade launcher and pours a little something extra into each of the explosives with Axiom. 
Mark! Koa orders, and a blistering fast blaze of bullets crash into the unarmored terrorists as the head of one of the last two mech piloting terrorists straight up detonates. A blast hits the ground and the sound wave slams into them all like a physical force before the shock wave can. The one-two punch knocks them off balance then bounces what few standing opponents are left over the edge. I'm getting that weapon, Reggie growls out. Cover me! He orders, setting his gun to the side. You're doing what? Harriet demands him as he vaults out of cover, and Amadi starts glowing as he twists more and more illusions to give him visual cover as Lavender watches in nothing short of sheer awe to the events unfolding around her. Why is he going for the endless barrage? Lavender demands even as Koa grins while giving the stealth and sprinting man covering fire. Thousand-shot rocket launcher is awesome. Koa answers easily enough, and Amadi chuckles. Man's got his priorities. New lease on life needs a new way to spend the time. Amadi adds in as waves an image for the mech trying to retrieve the dropped endless barrage. There's a clear moment of panic as the mech's grippers go clean through the expensive and powerful weapon. Reggie grabs the weapon, quickly checks it over and turns to bail even as the mech terrorist does the smart thing for once, and the endless barrage starts flashing and beeping as some kind of homing beacon starts going off. The mech turns towards Reggie just before it's hit by one of Amadi's grenades and blasted off the level. In the distance, the sound of sirens blare through the air as numerous law enforcement agents start rushing to the scene. What the hell took them so long? Amadi demands, even as Reggie rejoins them in their defensive emplacement. Duh! They've got friends in the guard. How did you keep moving with the Axiom scrambled by the Null? I could barely stay conscious. Lavender demands, stomping a hoof and trying to look intimidating despite being dressed as a goth cheerleader. It knocked me clean out, Harriet admits, and there's a glance around from the guys. Yay, they get the message. We're from Cruel Space Ladies. We're used to Null, Amadi mutters. Although I must say I prefer Axiom, it lets you have some real fun. He remarks before looking around. Hey, one of you pop your head up. There's something with these patrol cars. The hairs on the back of my neck are sticking up. Let me look. Tarita's kind of new around Centris, Lavender says, popping up and looking straight at the approaching vehicles. Oh, okay. We need to run, all of us, she says in a shaking tone before racing out of the hiding place, bracing her fall with Axiom and galloping down the block to leap off and down several levels, all three men and Harriet in hot pursuit.